about, it's 2019 and tongue tie, is it underdiagnosed? Is it overdiagnosed? Are we not recognizing it? Are we calling normal, abnormal, PAM, help? Of course, there is a classic tongue tie. So um, presumably from the beginning of time, some of our babies, small percent, we don't really know the percentage, but maybe 2% to 3% of um, human infants have been born with a membrane under the tongue that impacted on tongue mobility. And again, it would seem to be across cultures and perhaps from the beginning of time that um, membrane was cut. If um, the impact on tongue mobility affected breastfeeding. But we have seen um, a serious problem with overdiagnosis and overtreatment of our baby's oral connective tissues, um, really from 2005. So I guess what has happened is that through the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, when a social breakdown really in breastfeeding, our own profession, began to say quite forcefully that that um, tongue tie didn't exist and it's absolutely true that until the last decade or so many of our breastfeeding infants were unable to um, continue on in a breastfeeding relationship with their mother because tongue tie wasn't being um, picked up a classic tongue tie wasn't being um, picked up and, um, and cut the phrenotomy. In 2005, a little newsletter appeared, an item appeared in the newsletter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, mm -hmm. in which Dr. Betty Carillis and Kathy Watson-Jenner proposed that perhaps some of our babies were experiencing breastfeeding problems because of an undiagnosed submucosal tie or posterior tongue tie. And uh, it's really from there that this diagnosis of a posterior tongue tie has come to the fore. And then really in very uh, recent years, the last few years, coming out of the work of um, uh, Dr. Scott Siegel, Dr. Larry Kotlow, um, a diagnosis of upper lip tie. And uh, I guess because we all care so much about the well-being of breastfeeding women and their babies, because so many of the tools that we have due to a lack of research investment, are not proving effective, then these diagnoses um, have really spread like wildfire. And so we see in Australia, for instance, between 2006 and 2016, um, there was a 420% increase in um, Medicare funded phrenotomies. But now it would seem that many, if not most, of the phrenotomies are actually being done by our colleagues, the dentists, using laser. And that particular Australian study, which I and my team um, performed, the first author was uh, Vishal, Vishal Kapoor, um, we showed that uh, in Canberra, between 2006 and 2016, where there was no dentist performing, the phrenotomies, there'd been a 3,710% wow. increase in the rate of phrenotomy. And we think that better reflects what's actually going on in Australia today. And there are international studies, Canada and, uh, and the US, that show similar kinds of figures, classic um, figures for overtreatment.